Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Margie Galarno, and I'm part of the City of Toronto Business Services team. Today, our team will provide will be providing you with some information on the CAF ATO and Outdoor Dining Program. The format of our webinar today will include a presentation, and then we'll focus on answering some of the questions that were posted on Eventbrite during the registration process. Before we begin, I wanted to highlight a few things. We'll be recording this session so that we can post it on our City of Toronto Business Resources website to benefit others who may not be able to attend the session today. We have muted everyone's audio because we've experienced background noise in the past and it interferes with the quality of the presentation. If you have any technical issues during the webinar, try leaving the webinar and logging back in again as this may reset your system. Now, let's get started. Presenting our webinar today is my colleague, Michael Wolfson, Food and Beverage Sector Development Officer. And we also have staff from Transportation Services and Zoning to answer some of the questions that you posted on Eventbrite during the registration process. I'll now pass it over to my colleague, Michael, who will begin the presentation. Go ahead, Michael. Good morning. Let me begin by acknowledging the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is home to many diverse nations, Intuit and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In 2020, as a response to COVID-19, the City of Toronto introduced the CAFE TO program, designed to allow bars and restaurants impacted by, strict, by restricted indoor capacity to expand their dining areas onto the public right-of-way in order to support the hospitality industry. The program last summer saw over 800 restaurants and bars supported with expanded uh, with, with expanded space on both the streets and the sidewalks. In 2020, temporary use zoning bylaws were also put in place so that restaurants were also able to expand outdoor dining areas onto private property, such as parking lots across the city, without the need for registration or fees. The CAFE TO program will be reprised in 2021 2022, with several improvements and enhancements to the registration process and program guidelines. In order to continue to provide support for restaurants and bars amid the ongoing pandemic. Permission for expansion of outdoor dining on private property is also expected to be expanded until April of 2022. This webinar We'll discuss options for restaurants to take advantage of expanded outdoor dining spaces in 2021. We will explain the CAF ATO program, discuss various options for expansion of outdoor dining, and give you information on how to participate in CAF ATO or expand a patio on private property. The development of expanded opportunities for outdoor dining centers around a number of key principles. To ensure that it is simple to access the program while also ensuring that our roads and sidewalks continue to remain safe and accessible for people who use them every day. As a pandemic response program, the CAF ATO guidelines incorporate important public health considerations that must be taken into account by restaurant and bar owners when reopening in order to ensure that their staff and patrons can safely work and dine in the outdoor areas. The registration process for CAFE TO was simplified and designed in such a way that accessing the program is easy for restaurant operators and efficient for city staff to review so that restaurant operators can take full advantage of the cafe season. Operators looking to expand on private property 
have enhanced permissions to expand without the need for registration. Accessibility, equity, and safety are also key considerations that were interwoven throughout the CAFE TO guidelines and are used to direct where, when, and how cafes on both the sidewalk and street can be placed. Restaurant operators also have an important role to play so that all residents who use the sidewalk, bike lanes, and drive on the street can safely and easily navigate areas with Cafe TO installations and so that cafe spaces are accessible spaces for their patrons. Besides Cafe TO, there are a number of regulations that guide and direct restaurant and cafe operations throughout the city. In 2019, the city adopted a new bylaw for sidewalk cafes, parklets, and marketing displays, from which Cafe TO draws its authority and many of its regulations. This bylaw regulates outdoor dining on the right of way throughout Toronto and contains rules around accessibility, cafe size, and application requirements. Much of this bylaw, including associated fees, has been paused in order to permit the simplified Cafe TO program. The Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario regulates liquor licenses for bars and restaurants. They have introduced a set of regulations this year that permits restaurants and bars to temporarily expand their liquor license areas onto outdoor dining spaces without the need to apply for permission. When you apply successfully to Cafe TO, the city issues a letter of non-objection, which extends this permission into your Cafe TO installation. The Health Protection and Promotion Act guides the health inspection or dine safe process for restaurants and bars. There are certain noise and music restrictions imposed on outdoor dining areas from both Chapter 742 and the city's noise bylaw. For information about the regulation of noise and music on cafe areas can be found in the Cafe TO guidelines. As already mentioned, a temporary use zoning bylaw is being implemented which grants permission for restaurants to expand outdoor dining on private property. There are also provincial and municipal public health orders with respect to COVID-19 that impact restaurants and bars, including such areas as capacity limits, physical distancing requirements, mask use and hours of operation. These must be followed at all times. Broadly, the Cafe TO program has four tactics to support restaurants and bars. A pausing of typical application permits and fees under Chapter 742, as well as an increasing of permissions for expansion of private patios. A simplified and easy to understand guidebook to permit, the to permit and regulate cafes on the street, sidewalk, and on private property. City-led facilitation and installation of curb lane closures to allow cafes to be safely located on streets. And an education and enforcement campaign for operators permitted under the Cafe TO program. As Cafe TO 19 restrictions continue to prohibit or restrict indoor dining, and in consideration of the financial impact on restaurant owners, the city has waived all fees for outdoor dining in 2021, including Cafe TO. The regular process for application and permitting of sidewalk cafes and parklets under Chapter 742 is also paused for this year and a simplified registration process has been put in place instead. Enhanced permissions to allow restaurants to expand on private property have been adopted. Restaurants looking to expand on private property 
are not required to register with CAFE TO. The CAFE TO guidebook is an easy to understand set of guidelines and regulations that provide restaurant and bar operators with the requirements to install cafes on the street, sidewalk, and on private property. The guidebook identifies the different permitted cafe types and their minimum dimensions. It gives information on the required pedestrian clearway to be maintained on the sidewalk and other accessibility necessities. This year's guidebook also provides guidelines for the installation and regulation of fencing and temporary platforms. It also highlights certain restrictions that are in place for CAFE TO participants, such as prohibitions on enclosures and tents and on amplified music. The most up-to-date version of the guidebook can be found at the CAFE TO website, www.toronto.ca forward slash CAFE TO. In order for CAFE TO to be successfully implemented, it is critical that restaurant operators understand the CAFE TO guidebook and the permissions granted for expansion of both roads, sidewalks, and on private property. This ensures that the cafes, the sidewalks, and the roads are safe and accessible. CAFE TO will have an education and enforcement campaign operating throughout the CAFE season that will see both complaint-based investigations as well as proactive patrols on streets with CAFE installations to ensure that the guidelines are being adhered to. There will be a heightened focus on enforcement and education of accessibility-related guidelines, such as maintaining the pedestrian clearway and ensuring that materials are cane detectable and color contrasted. We will be providing education to operators on their responsibilities throughout the guidebook, social media posts, and newsletters. Enforcement officials on the street will also be communicating directly with operators to inform them of their responsibilities where there are compliance issues. This year, we will, we will be improving coordination with 311 to ensure that the public has up-to-date information about the program and ensure that complaints made to 311 are investigated quickly and appropriately. Cafe operators who are the repeated subject of complaints may have their ability to participate in the program revoked and the city has the authority to remove cafe installations where illegal or unsafe conditions are noted. Given the current situation with the pandemic, we can be sure that there will be specific public health measures in place that operators must keep in mind when operating outdoor dining spaces. These are, some, are just some examples of what we have seen in the past year, but does not replace the current public health emergency orders or other information or guidelines put out by public health authorities. We would advise that you monitor the most current public health measures that are present when you begin to operate. For example, of the types of public measures that, are, that may be seen would include Patrons must be seated at all times. A required separation distance or impermeable barrier between tables must be in place. Patrons must wear face coverings unless eating or drinking. Patron screening and contact information must be collected. Personal protective equipment or PPE must be worn by restaurant staff. There are still prohibitions on buffet service and a requirement to prepare a safety plan for your establishment. In 2021, there are several different options for operators to expand their outdoor dining capacity, both on private property and on public property. 
Placing a patio on private property is often an excellent option for a restaurant if the property has adequate space to accommodate a patio. On private property, a patio does not need to comply with the various rules that govern the use of a street or sidewalk patio. Instead, the patio needs to comply with the zoning bylaw. In 2021, there are enhanced permissions for restaurants located on private property to expand. The city currently has in place a temporary use zoning bylaw, which permits larger outdoor cafes on private property that would typically be permitted. It is expected that the city council will extend the bylaw to keep these permissions in place until April of 2022. If the restaurant is looking to install a structure like a deck, enclosure, or canopy on private property, a building permit may be required. And we suggest you contact Toronto Buildings for more information. There are certain regulations in the temporary use zoning bylaw that determines where and how patios on private property can be located without special permission from the city, as long as that patio is located entirely on private property. When placing a patio on private property, the following rules apply. The size of a patio can be an area of up to 50% of the interior floor space of the establishment, or 50 square meters, whichever is greater. Private patios must be located at least 30 meters away from all properties in a residential zone. If the patio is located above the ground floor, for example, a rooftop patio, this increases to 40 meters. If the private patio abuts a residential property, a fence must be installed at the edge of the patio. Private patios are allowed to occupy parking spaces. This means most restaurants located in retail plazas are permitted to expand into the parking lot. As long as the parking spaces are not accessible parking or parking for residential use, and you must get the property owner's permission. Private patios cannot have entertainment such as music or dining. Please ensure that you closely read the private property section of the Cafe TO guidebook before installing a patio on private property. As a note, we are currently working on putting together a pamphlet that will have information specific to expansion of outdoor dining on private property. It will be emailed to all participants of this webinar and posted online at www.toronto.ca forward slash Cafe Toronto. Under Cafe TO, there are four kinds of cafes that are permitted to be installed on the street or sidewalk. A frontage cafe is your typical cafe located on the sidewalk directly in front of the restaurant or bar. These cafes can be expanded so that they stretch in front of a neighboring property. However, a letter of permission from the neighbor is required before this expansion can occur. During registration, if looking to expand in front of a neighbor, there will be an opportunity to upload the required letters of permission. A small frontage cafe is a small cafe with tables located directly against the building. There are strict size limits for this cafe and typically only small two person tables will fit. Full details about the requirements of a small frontage cafe can be found in the guidebook. This type of cafe does not require registration with Cafe TO. And as long as the rules within the guidebook are followed, any restaurant or bar can put out a small frontage cafe. Curb lane cafes are cafes located on the street in the lane closest to the sidewalk. These cafes require the city to install traffic safety equipment first so that it is safe for patrons to dine in the street. 
Boulevard or flankage cafes are located in the boulevard along the side of a restaurant. These cafes are generally only available for restaurants located on corner properties, which is typically a local residential road. In order to qualify for these types of cafes, the support of the local city councilor must be obtained. Here you can see the different cafe types in the streetscape. The pedestrian clearway must be maintained at all times as seen in this graphic. When a restaurant applies for a curb lane cafe, the city must determine that the proposed cafe can be properly and safely located on the street. Cafe, cafe TO and local BIAs work closely to ensure that the curb lane cafes and public parklets are designed using a streetscape approach. We collaborate with the TTC, Bike Share Toronto, and other organizations to do all we can to accommodate curb lane cafes where possible. If the location is approved, the city will install a curb lane closure. A set of traffic safety equipment which delineates the cafe space from the rest of the street. Once the curb lane closure is installed, restaurants can put out their cafe materials and begin operation. Although we make every effort to accommodate a curb lane cafe, they are not possible in every location. Some examples of locations that prohibit curb lane cafes are commercial or accessible loading or boarding zones, certain transit stop zones, designated accessible parking locations, designated taxi cab zones, certain locations with bike lanes, areas that would conflict with active construction, any area too close to an intersection, or any other areas deemed by traffic safety engineers to not be safe. It is not safe to put out a cafe in the street without a curb lane closure first in place. When installing a frontage cafe, there are important accessibility considerations that must be considered when purchasing and placing your cafe materials. The pedestrian clearway is a path of travel for people using the sidewalk. Located between the building and the furnishing zone, which is the part of the sidewalk next to the road where you would find bark ring, bike rings, benches, and utility poles. Every cafe operator is responsible for ensuring that a pedestrian clearway of 2.1 meters is maintained at all times. This means that tables, fencing, signage, and the queuing of customers should be kept free of this space. This is especially important so that people using mobility devices, people using strollers, and all members of the public can safely use the sidewalk. Some downtown streets with wider sidewalks are required to maintain a slightly larger pedestrian clearway. The full details can be found in the guidebook. The type of materials you use for delineation or fencing also have a large impact on accessibility. Delineation or fencing must be cane detectable for people using white canes and should also have a color contrast incorporated to easily distinguish the barriers from the environment. When operating a curb lane cafe, there are several choices operators can make to increase accessibility for patrons of their restaurant or bar. The choice of dining furniture can have a big impact on patrons. The seating arrangement at a picnic table, for example, can be a barrier for a patron using a mobility device to dine. Consider using standard low top tables and chairs. The layout of a cafe area should be arranged in such a way to provide a clear route 
and maneuver space from tables to the entrance and exit for patrons using mobility devices. Curb Lane Cafes will have an asphalt ramp built to provide accessible access from the sidewalk into the cafe space. Operators should be sure to keep the base of the asphalt ramp clear of any obstacles. Restaurants that have fully accessible washrooms could choose to advertise this on their website. In 2021, Cafe TO will be providing clear and simple guidelines for the building of fencing around your cafe, both on the sidewalk and on the curb lane. Fences must be between 0.9 meters and one meter tall, measured from the sidewalk. This is in order to ensure that sight lines for motorists are not obstructed. Fencing must not be drilled into the sidewalk or road and may not be affixed or attached to trees, street furniture, or utility structures. All fencing must ensure that cane detectability is maintained. When fencing is placed on the curb lane cafes, there are additional safety requirements. Fencing in the road must be placed at least 1.2 meters away from the live lane of traffic, or 1.5 meters on a route with a streetcar. This is to ensure that passing cyclists have a safe place to travel in. Fencing on a road must have a reflective quality to it so that it is visual at night. They also cannot be made of fabric, canvas, plywood, plexiglass, or any similar materials as these materials make the fence unsafe in windy conditions. If planning on installing fencing in the road, you must wait until the curb lane closure is installed first. Another major enhancement of the 2021 CAF ATO program is permission for restaurants and bars to apply to install a temporary platform. These platforms are built structures that have railings and a floor and can only be placed on curb lane cafes. Platforms have a distinct set of criteria to guide permission. They must meet Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act and Ontario Building Code requirements. Platforms are required to be designed by an engineer or architect or a building code inspection number licensed designer. They cannot be longer than 12 meters in length, may not be affixed to the road or sidewalk, and also cannot be placed over utility structures, like a catch basin or a hydro vault. In order to qualify for a platform, you must also qualify for a curb lane cafe, and they will not be possible everywhere. It is important to note that if you receive permission for a platform, you may be required at the direction of the city to remove it to allow for maintenance on the road, and you will be required to remove it at the end of the cafe season in November, when the Curb Lane Cafe is removed. When completing your registration, there will be a question asking if you are interested in installing a platform. If you indicate interest, you will be required to upload two photographs of the street from your sidewalk, one facing in each direction. For example, one facing east and one facing west. Staff will use these photographs to conduct a preliminary review of the site. If the platform is feasible, staff will contact the operator directly with next steps. Operators will be required to prepare and submit professionally produced drawings and site plans at their own expense. These must be stamped by an engineer or architect or signed by a building code inspection number licensed designer. You are not permitted to build a platform 
without explicit written approval from the city. I must also raise a flag of caution here for those interested in platforms. CAFATO is still a temporary program. Permission to install a platform this year does not guarantee that permission will be granted in future years. Please consider this before committing financial resources to the platform. Registration for CAFATO in 2021 opens on Friday, February 26th. All restaurant or bar operators looking to expand the cafe on the street or sidewalk must register at www.toronto.ca forward slash cafe to. Even if you were a part of the program last year, the registration process is designed to be simple and efficient. When you register, you will be asked to provide the following. Your City of Toronto Eating Establishment Business License Number, a complete certificate of insurance showing a minimum of $1 million in liability coverage. If you have a City of Toronto Cafe Permit Number, which starts with R57, you will be asked to provide that number. If you are looking to expand your frontage cafe in front of your neighbors, you will be required to upload the signed letter of permission. Again, operators looking to expand on private property or those only looking to install a small frontage cafe do not need to register with Cafe TO. Restaurants who have an approved registration for a sidewalk cafe are, are permitted to begin operating as soon as public health orders allow for outdoor dining. Operators interested in a sidewalk cafe are able to register now and will be able to register at any point during the program, which ends in April, 2022. Registration for curb lane cafes will occur this year in blocks. This means that in order to have your installation occur within the first installation window, from May 8th to May 22nd, you must register during the first registration block, February 26th to March the 26th. The second registration block will open on March 27th and will correspond to an installation window sometime in June of 2021. Further registration blocks will open later in the summer where dictated by demand. We suggest the restaurants apply as early as is possible during the first registration block so that they can access the cafe early on and maximize their outdoor dining. Businesses requiring other licenses or permits from the City of Toronto should visit the Permits and Licensing page of the City of Toronto website. License application and renewal fees must be paid online. From the front page of toronto.ca, click on Services and Payments tab, go to Permits and Licenses, and find the page for restaurants, cafes, bars, and pubs. This page has all the relevant licensing information for restaurants and bars, including who can apply and application requirements. Cafe TO does not include temporary sidewalk sales. Sidewalk sale permits applications are available online. The city will not comment on furniture or equipment requirements beyond what is suggested in the guidebook for accessibility. This is where you can go to get any additional information you require on opening an outdoor patio in Toronto. Let's all hope for an early spring and great patio weather from now on. Thanks for attending the webinar and stay safe. Now I will pass it over to my colleague, Tobiah, from 
Transportation Services to answer some questions on uh, the uh, uh, questions that were sent in on the Eventbrite website. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Tobias Abramson. Um, if I have not been in contact with you before, I am uh, a project manager on the CAFE TO team. Uh, and like Michael said, I work in transportation services. Um, I've gone through some of the questions that were submitted as part of Eventbrite and we'll be answering some of them now. If your question doesn't get answered, please feel free to contact us directly at CAFETO at Toronto.ca uh, with your question and we'll be sure to answer it. So I'm just going to start with some questions. Uh, the first question, as a new business, can you advise um, of what we can do to be proactive when preparing to open and take care of our guests? Uh, in order to be, when, when, you, when you think about opening, you must ensure that you have applied and received the correct license for your business. Please allow two weeks for the processing of the application if you have not already done so. You should be sure to apply for Cafe TO as soon as possible, especially if you are applying for a curb lane. You should also be sure to monitor and understand the latest public health guidelines put out by both the city and the province when you're looking to open your outdoor dining uh, cafe. Are non-food businesses able to use Cafe TO program too? Uh, no, the Cafe TO program is aimed at assisting restaurants and bars with adding outdoor options for dining when permitted. Other business types will not be able to register. Next question. My business is new and is still in construction and will be opening in mid-April. May I still apply for a Cafe TO Kerblin Cafe? Yes. You may be able to apply for Cafe TO as long as you've obtained your B71 business license, which is the eating establishment license from the city, and you have obtained the requisite insurance. The next question, how long would it be able to how long would it take to obtain the permit after registration? Uh, we will have all registrations um, completed in the first wave, vetted and approved by the end of March. So if you apply by March 26, uh, you, will, you will have your application vetted by the end of March. Next question, are businesses able to borrow or use a curb or sidewalk space that neighboring businesses do not wish to use with their permission? Uh, for example, if you want to expand your sidewalk cafe in front of your neighbor, uh, if so, how would you go about properly applying? Sidewalk cafes on public property may be expanded in front of a neighboring business if written permission is granted from the adjacent tenant and or property owner. In your application, you will have an option to choose expand your cafe in front of an adjacent property. Uh, and a permission letter will be submitted as part of your application and will be required if you choose this option. On private property, your cafe may only be placed in front of your building only. There is no, uh, you cannot expand onto a neighbor's property with private, on pro private property. Next question, if you apply for the first period starting in May, when does that run until and is there a need to reapply for the second period? There are two different end dates for the Cafe TO program, depending on what kind of cafe you have. For those of you with curb lane cafes in the street, they must be removed by November in order to accommodate for winter maintenance. Sidewalk cafes are permitted to be installed all winter until April 2022, if public health continues to permit uh, outdoor dining. There will be no need to reapply again in the second registration block if you are approved, approved during the first one. Permissions for expanding on private property are also expected to run until April 2022. The next question was, how long does the application take? Um, if you have all the required documentation prepared, the application takes about 10 minutes to complete. And again, this is on our website, toronto.ca slash All right, next question. Will insulation be for everyone at the same time, or will some areas get their patios days or weeks ahead of others? This is about curb lane cafe installations. Um, the installation process of curb lane cafes requires a significant amount of resources and time. Last year, we installed over 400 curb lane closures, which required uh, several thousand pieces of traffic equipment. We are working hard to ensure that the installation process is a, as efficient and speedy as possible, but it will not be possible to install all the curb lane closures on the same day. 
will we, will we be able to run power or water to the Kerblin cafe, ca, uh, cafes? Um, power cables and water hoses are not permitted to be run across the pedestrian clearway into the cafe. I am not in a BIA and I would like to explore having a TTC stop temporarily re relocated. How can we accomplish that? Um, if you are not in a BIA and would like, if you are in a BIA, uh, please work with your T with your BIA coordinator to um, make these kinds of requests. If you are not in a BIA, please ensure that you have successfully registered uh, for the Cafe Geo program. After you have registered, email the specifics of your request, including your address, to cafeto at toronto.ca and we can work with the TTC. Uh, I would note here that not all requests to remove or re relocate TT stop, TTC stops will be possible. Next question was, uh, are pods or tents allowed on Kerblin cafes? Can I have a tent on the sidewalk or on the public boulevard? Tents or structures, which includes private dining pods, are not permitted to be placed anywhere in the public right of way, either on the curb lane or on the sidewalk. Tents and structures on the sidewalks and roads are not permitted um, because of safety and accessibility concerns. Tents and related guy wires impede on the pedestrian clearway and reduce accessibility for those using the sidewalk. There is also a significant impact for sight lines for cars, pedestrians, and cyclists traveling on the road and sidewalk caused by tents, which would be a, a safety concern. Um, I would also remind people that operators are not permitted to affix anything to the right of way um, which again speaks to uh, the difficulties surrounding tents. If you're looking to install a tent or a structure on private property, you may need a building permit, and we would suggest that you contact Toronto Building Customer Service for further information. The next question, if I apply for a Kerblin Cafe, am I guaranteed a space directly in front of my restaurant? Although we will do our best to locate cafes close to the front of restaurants, there is a possibility that your cafe, cafe may be offset from the front of your store and not directly in front of it. When placing cafes in the street, we must take into consideration a number of factors related to traffic safety, including proximity to the intersection, um, proximity to TTC stops, and equitable distribution of space for all participating restaurants who have applied for Kerblin cafes. The next question, when can, we, when can we begin constructing a platform? On public property, platforms are only permitted to be installed on Kerblin cafes when, with explicit approval from the city. In the Cafe Tio application, you will have a chance to indicate interest in building a platform. A preliminary review of the site will be conducted and staff will contact you directly about next steps, which include the submissions of drawings and site plans. You may not construct your patio in the roadway until given the written approval and until your curb enclosure is placed on the street. It is not safe to construct a patio in the street without the curb enclosure in place. If you're looking to construct a deck on private property, you may require a building permit again. And again, we, uh, we would advise you to consult with Toronto Buildings before beginning construction. Um, the next question, how can we expand on private property? If you can accommodate a patio entirely on private property and you meet the requirements of the zoning bylaw, you do not need to seek permission from the city or register with Cafe Tio prior to installation. You can just go ahead and install the outdoor patio. If you are not sure if your patio complies with the zoning bylaw, you may request a preliminary project review from the Toronto Building Division where staff will determine your compliance. You can find more details on this process in the Cafe Tio guidebook under the section for patios on private property. What are the criteria for the installation of a private property cafe in the rear of the restaurant? The primary criteria is that the patio must be at least 30 meters from uh, the lot of a residential zone. And this is 40 meters if your patio is located above the first floor, like on a rooftop patio. Its size must not be greater than 50 square meters or 50% of the interior of the restaurant, whichever amount is greater. Uh, a fence must be installed between the patio and the lot in the residential zone. And entertainment such as performances, music, or dancing is not permitted. Next question, will requirements for private property patios be released for quick implementation this year? Uh, 
the regulations for patios on private properties are already released. They're in the Cafeteo guidebook. Um, and we would, we would advise you to uh, consult the guidebook again in the section for specifically patios on private property. Uh, a couple more questions. What are, our, what are our responsibilities if the public doesn't obey the rules? It is your responsibility as the restaurant operator to ensure that you and your patrons are in compliance with the cafeteo guidelines at all times. Failure to do so could risk enforcement action and risk your permission to participate in the cafeteo program going forward. If you see any restaurants or bars who are not compliant with the cafeteo guidelines, please contact 311 with the specifics. Next question, is the city providing dividers or fencing for patios? If not, can we provide our own? The City of Toronto is not providing dividers or fencing for either cafes on the sidewalk or on private property. It is up to the owners to provide their own materials. Um, any fencing or delineation on public property must meet all cafeteo guidelines found in the temporary section, temporary fe fencing section of the guidebook. We will provide traffic equipment to restaurants accessing Caribbean and cafes. Restaurants may choose to build their own fencing for a Caribbean cafe if it meets the requirements of the guidebook after the Caribbean closure has been laid down. The next question, is there a resource within the city that can help businesses source planters and other temporary barriers that are required for Caribbean um, sidewalk and public pri private property patios? Um, the city cannot make any specific recommendations for vendors that supply cafe materials. The next question, are heaters permitted and will heaters be provided by the city? Heaters are permitted this year under Cafe TO as long as you maintain all the required guidelines found in the Cafe TO guidebook in the heater section. Heaters will not be provided by the city and must be sourced by the restaurants wishing to use them. Next question, is amplified music permitted this year? Amplified music is not permitted on either cafes on the public right-of-way or on private patios. This restriction predates Cafe Tio and is in place to reduce the impact on residential, uh, neighboring residential properties. And the final question, when is outdoor dining expected to start? Uh, like you, we are very anxious for the outdoor dining season, outdoor dining season to start and for cafes to begin operating outdoors. Um, we do not have any specific indication on when this might be, and we would advise that you continue to monitor public health information um, for the latest details on permissions for outdoor dining. Um, Margie, that's all I've got, and I'll pass it back to you. Perfect. Thanks so much, Tobias. I appreciate um, you responding and your team responding to all those questions that were posted. There was quite a few of them on, uh, on Eventbrite. So this concludes our webinar, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. We hope you found some useful information in there. Uh, I do plan to send everyone um, a few things as a follow-up email to this webinar. So uh, hope we, I hope to send that to, to everyone uh, within the next couple of days. Uh, the email will include a copy of the slide deck, a copy of the webinar recording. Um, Tobias mentioned the Cafe TO guidebook quite a few times, so I'll also uh, send you a link to that guidebook, uh, as well as uh, the questions and the responses the Cafe TO team put together with all the Eventbrite questions that were posted. So I'm going to attach that as well. So look out for that email for me. Again, it's Margie Golarno. Um, if you have any other questions that were not addressed in the webinar, um, Tobias did mention, feel free to just uh, email the Cafe TO, TO team directly at cafe TO at toronto.ca. So thank you so much to our team, Michael Wolfson, Tobias, and uh, the rest of the Cafe TO team for responding to these questions. We hope everyone has a, a wonderful day and um, be well out there. Thanks and take care.